Namaste, hello, and a good day to everybody. We are happy that you joined us for our sixth edition of Organic Webinars, a series hosted by Biofac India and uh, created by Bioreporter International. Let me shortly introduce our team, and that is Sandeep Kamat, based in Bangalore. He's board member of IFAM Asia and convener of India Organic Network, ION. He was active in the organic sector for more than a decade as a consultant, founder, speaker, or the organizer of events, and much more. He's especially dedicated to the biodynamic ideas and philosophy in the international community. Hi, Sandy. Oh, yeah, thank you, Karen. And that is Karen Heinz, based close to Frankfurt in, in Germany. Uh, she has been in the organic sector now for almost 40 years. She studied agriculture and also had worked on a biodynamic Demeter farm. She's, world -renowned, she's a world-renowned organic journalist, photographer, a videographer, and always inspired by the ideas of the worldwide organic movement. Thank you, Sandy. So dear audience, with the organic webinar series, we would like to update you with the help of international and today only Indian experts on or, uh, important topics from the organic sector. So today we will focus on success stories from the Indian organic industry. Please listen to six industry leaders in the organic sector, our esteemed panelists. Hi to everybody. Hi. We will learn Hi. about exciting business models from Terra Greens Organics, Soul Trees, Resta Organic 24 Mantra brand, Bio, Nature Bio Foods and Radico and PGS Spices. So Sandeep and me, we have the honor to guide you through this program. We have 90 minutes ahead with uh, a lot of information, discussion, presentations, and uh, hopefully a lot of questions of you. So, but first, let me introduce Shiva Kumar Venugopal. He's group director and member of the management board of Nürnberg Messe India Private Limited, and he will give us his welcome note. The screen is yours, Shiva Kumar, please. Thank you, thank you, Karen. Hi. Good afternoon, uh, everyone from Nürnberg Messe India. It's a pleasure to welcome you all on the occasion of our sixth webinar in the series organized by Nyanbag Messe India. It is a great pleasure to have you all for today's topic on how to sustainably grow your organic business, learnings from the journey of successful brands. Again, organized by Nyanbag Messe India under the ambit of BioPack India, India's largest exhibition for the organic sector, which is being organized with an aim of bringing various domain experts together to address the key issues of sustainability and healthy living. Our sincere thanks to Apita for their continuous support in organizing BioPack with us. I now take the honor of introducing our esteemed speakers for the day, Ms. Likita Bano, CEO of Terra Green Organics, Mr. N. Balasubramaniam, CEO of Shrestha Natural Bioproducts Limited, Dr. Thomas Jacob, advisor, PDS Organic Spices, who will be joining us in some time, Vishal Bandari, founder and CEO of Soltry, Mr. Rohan Grover, director, Nature Bio Foods, Sanjeev, Mr. Sanjeev, CEO of Radico. Welcome you all, and a warm welcome to our moderators, Ms. Karin Hines, founder, Bio Reporter International from Germany, and Mr. Sandeep Kamath, board member, IFOM Asia. I also thank our supporting association, ECOA the International Competence Center for Organic Agriculture, OFI, the Organic Farming Association of India, AIOI, the Association of Indian Organic Industry and our media partner, Pure and Echo India for their continuous support. Before I hand over the floor for today's discussion to Sandeep and Karen, I would like to make an important announcement on our BioPack India 2020 show. The 12th edition will be organized in a digital format this year from October 29th to 31st by Nyanbag Messe India. The current pandemic situation has forced us to go digital and the We Go Digital edition will offer comprehensive presentation options and year-long networking, community building opportunities for the industry. 
This digital event will be held under the aegis of Agriculture and Processed Food Products Export Development Authority, which is APIDA, under the Ministry of Commerce and Industry, which would aim to e-connect all the key players from the organic and natural industry over a single platform. I request all of you to mark your calendar for our first digital show in the last week of October, and looking forward to e-meet before we re-meet. Now, the floor is yours, Sandeep and Karen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Shiva Kumar. And very exciting news about the digital event. The first time we have such a large organic exhibition going online. And this will be dear participants for the year long till the next uh, physical event for 2021. So it's my pleasure to introduce our first expert, <clears throat> a super successful young lady from Hyderabad. She's inspired by the work of her mother. It's Likita Banu, the CEO of Terra Greens Organic. She's trained in Harvard and Stanford universities and Likita holds a passion for sustainable lifestyle choices. And she believes food to be an integral part of it. She's actively involved in spreading awareness about making right choices, not only for ourselves, but also the environment that we live in. She hopes to contribute to the sustainability movement at scale. Dear Likita, tell us about your and organic story. I'm looking forward to your presentation. Please, the screen is yours. Thank you, Karen. Um, thank you so much. Good afternoon, everybody. And uh, it's my absolute pleasure to be here and to present and to be a part of such an esteemed panel. Um, so, like Karen mentioned, Terra Greens came about as a result of my mother's passion for farming. Back in 2012, when um, I graduated from college and came back home, um, she was farming in our family lands and growing vegetables. And she would force us to eat all these vegetables that she was growing. And um, so we thought that it's time that we solve the problem and not uh, eat so many vegetables. So Terra Greens actually came about as a small vegetable delivery service in uh, Hyderabad. Uh, in fact, uh, we drove down to a store which was uh, right across the road and we asked them if they would stock organic vegetables and they said yes. And um, my mother and I uh, started a small packaging unit in my basement along with my watchman. And uh, that's how the journey started. And back then in 2012, there wasn't much awareness about anything to do with organic food or um, organic agriculture in India and even in Hyderabad. So we thought that it would be a good opportunity to spread awareness and also make good food available to all. So we started off with that mission. Um, my mom being an avid farmer and um, being um, involved in sustainable agriculture for over 30 years now, um, she uh, was the expert on the back end. And I, as a young graduate, um, picked up on her direction and worked on the front end, which is marketing, distribution, and sales. Um, so I think we'll move on to the next slide. I put this uh, presentation together just to give a sort of an overview of our journey. And like I said, we started in uh, 2012. And um, we started with a small group of farmers uh, in Karnul district in AP. And uh, we moved from a small packaging unit to a much larger one. Um, we were one of the first to start out. So we got picked up by the national retail chains. And before we knew it, we were running a full-fledged business. It wasn't part of the plan, but the plan happened. So we uh, caught up fairly quickly. Um, and um, Ever since then, today we stand, I think we can move to the next slide. Yep, 25 years of farming experience of my mom and 2012, the next slide, please. Um, yeah, today we work with about 12,000 farmers in five states and we have about a product line of 100 plus products. We move in the staple space, but we do dabble in R&D and uh, one of my personal passions is to develop products uh, for 
um, people who want to adapt to the sustainable uh, way of living but uh, have convenience issues. So that's uh, one of my personal projects and we have developed quite a few products on that front. And uh, we work with about 130 plus partners and uh, we actually do agriculture in uh, 127 acres in the outskirts of Hyderabad. Um, we have the core competence in farming and we actually do uh, maintain a biodynamic farm of 40 acres. Um, and uh, we have partnered with about 300 plus stores uh, across the country and uh, we hope to grow uh, further in the coming years. The next slide, please. Yes, and uh, I think like everybody on the panel will agree is that in organic food, the back end is our farmers and without them, it's really hard to scale. So we do invest quite a bit in making sure that the supply chain is genuine, authentic and traceable. And we have control over what we buy and how it's grown. So we do have a mandate in the next two years to grow further on our farmer network. Uh, from 300, we are at 12,000 now. So hopefully we'll grow further. The next slide, please. And this is just like time. Um, we did uh, um, partner with other companies in 2018 and uh, we, do have a private labeling and a bulk and an export vertical now. We started off, like I said, as a subscription delivery service, and then we moved to becoming a manufacturing unit today. Next slide, please. Um, this is just the supply chain that we control. And the next slide, please. Um, the product categories that we work towards. And the next slide. Um, and the certifications. So, I mean, I think I'll just keep the presentation aside uh, in view of the time. So um, that's just our journey where we are and uh, uh, what we do. Uh, if I have to describe Terra Greens in like one sentence, we're basically a supply chain company, right from the farmer to the customer. Last year, we also dabbled into retail. Uh, we started our own store and then we park modified trucks around the city uh, under the brand name Green Station. So uh, we hope to work throughout the supply chain, uh, right from the farmer to the end consumer. And we uh, work with a mission to provide good food to people, um, good for the farmer and for the planet. Um, that's about it. Thank you so much. So much for that wonderful presentation. Now it's my pleasure to introduce Vishal Bandari, the founder and CEO of Soul Tree, which is India's first uh, BDIH certified natural and organic Ayurveda cosmetic line. Uh, Vishal left a uh, well-paying job in the Merchant Navy to start his own enterprise as he was deeply influenced by the Earth Charter, a roadmap to actualize the goals of sustainable development. And this led him to explore different ways where business can contribute to sustainable development. And his encounter with NGOs and women farmers in the remote villages of Uttarakhand was his starting point of his journey. Vishal, the screen is yours. Hi, uh, thank you, Sandeep. Good afternoon, everyone. And uh, thank you very much to IO Reporter and, of course, Newman Messi for giving me this opportunity to present my journey. Uh, I think I would just briefly, as, as they still say that a picture is worth a thousand words, I will very briefly convey my journey uh, uh, of building Soul Tree. I think it's also um, a journey of not only my individual personal journey, and at the same time of also how an organic business moves up, has moved up the value chain and today, you know, ultimately cul culminating in Soul Tree. So I, it's a, I, it all started when I was looking to uh, create a business which could con contribute to sustainable development, something which I was very interested in. And that's, for me, the starting point came in uh, when I traveled to Uttarakhand and uh, when I was looking for a, you know, somewhere to begin and be able to start something which could ultimately contribute to society to, uh, but also in a for-profit way. So uh, that's where I uh, came across farmers who were uh, practicing organic farming. This is about 2004-2005. Can you move to the next slide, please? Yeah, and uh, what I uh, encountered there was that while, while, of course, organic farming was being practiced, but because of the remoteness, because of uh, you know the distance, there was a disconnect from the market. There was a disconnect from the consumer as well. And I found felt that this was a place where I could make a difference. I could you know contribute. And uh, it came out of understanding their problems and their challenges. 
and also identifying what would be the strengths and i think this was important to really not to go and impose my own views but to really understand that what could be done in the environment that i found myself in so next slide so what i uh, what we understood was that since uttarakhand you know was the higher reaches the himalayas is a place which has traditionally been uh, the home of let's say ayurvedic medicinal plants and i felt this is where we could actually work together uh, one of course because uh, it gave a, a higher premium because one of my objective was to uh, support livelihood generation and i felt that medicinal plants would be a niche category which could be grown and started uh, working on what kind of plants could be grown and how we could take them to the market and in turn build a sustainable demand for the farmers and most of these farmers were you know uh, women farmers and uh, of course they have very small land holdings and that was one of the challenges and we kept all of that in mind while developing the business model from these villages next please so after uh, you know uh, moving forward in terms of the cultivation of ayurvedic plants and then subsequent processing and exports to the international market we also looked at how could we value add to these medicinal plants uh, so that they could also be a, a secondary livelihood generation and that uh, involved uh, the local ngo and together we worked together to set up a small uh, unit for processing of these medicinal plants and convert them into supplements so of course i was supporting and the ngo provided the infrastructure and uh, this as a result we were able to uh, you know take us also directly to the consumer so in that sense this was the first step to move to add value for the local uh, producers but also move close to the consumer and which has been what i have tried to do throughout so uh, from there we uh, side means so one of the challenges of keep the demand sustainable because the farmers you know once they got income they would grow and you cannot work next time i'm going to buy next year but following i won't but after that you know we said that how can we continue the i think idea was we create a, a dedicated market for the produce that was coming and how we were taking it to consumer at part of the ideas was to also process the herbs and uh, make them into uh complete consumer consumable products so next slide please so uh so the, of course the uh, the uh, while of course there was a this i thought of uh, going into a completely uncharted territory which was beauty and but at the same in terms of developing products which could the uh, outcome of that was that uh, since of course i had grown in a environment of let's say organic certifications my natural inclination was to create products which could be again certified and that's what led me to uh, the bdi standard and we worked to develop products to bdi standard next products slide please and the outcome was a range of ayurvedic organic beauty products but also certified in this case from uh, bdi of germany so this is how the brand looked like when it first came out and uh, you know the i think the there was a lot of work to how to communicate the core values of the brand to the consumer and i think this has also been one of my uh, let's say important learning which i will share quickly and uh, we were continuously you know learning and understanding that you know how do we Uh, give confidence to the consumer how do we uh, you know educate the consumer and therefore the brand continuously evolved and from there uh, you know the brand started as a very small let's say actually started in a the r&d was actually in a cow shed you know we refurbished a cow shed in you know, in delhi and uh, they created all of this but at the same time the goal or the vision was to be on international standards so there doesn't have to be a compromise there and as a result soulchi started to go in international in markets like germany france which are all very developed markets in every region and as we move forward we also evolved the brand and now uh, next slide please this is you know how the brand looks today 
which is you know which has been burning and today soltry is of course uh, you know it's it's i would say a direct to consumer brand because we have been able to build that kind of connect with the consumers at the same time it's also uh, you know growing as a uh, as an international brand especially on the uh, legs of sustainability certifications and of course the indian heritage of ayurveda so uh, this is briefly my journey uh, of course limited time so not to go into anecdotes and other experiences or the pain points what i would like to quickly share since i understand that you know there are uh, quite a few uh, entrepreneurs already here or there are people who are wishing to be entrepreneurs i would say there are three things that i kind of can share uh, from my own experience one is that you know an organic uh, products business is a long haul it is not that something that you know you just can build overnight and uh, you know get out after you know a couple of years it is it takes time because there is learning and in and especially if you are the first ones you have to do all the learning by yourself but in today's time there is learning available more easily and i think i would encourage everyone to you know reach out to others and uh, maybe learn uh, from their experiences or also uh, you know you know like not to reinvent the wheel so as to say the second part which i feel is that in an organic business the role of the founder is very important because essentially the uh, you know the founder ends up becoming the spokesperson both internally and externally and this is what i felt that even within my company i had to be the spokesperson in project so vishal may i may i interrupt you because i the connection is bad somehow i i cannot hear you Oh, but sorry. we have a discussion uh, round later on, and so I think that's uh, good to have these uh, key takeaways also later. Yeah, may I? Yo, perfect. So, and hopefully then the connection will be better. So now it is my uh, pleasure to welcome um, Bala. I make it short because the other name I cannot pronounce. <laughs> so he is the CEO and uh, director of um, Sresta, 24 letter mantra brand. And he's uh, since a very long time uh, active in the industry. So he's uh, an agriculture person who is uh, with uh, more than 30 years experience and he uh, created a lot of um, very important brands in India. So he's, uh, his strength and his work philosophy is uh, to work intense on a brand marketing and he was very successful in this space. So we are excited uh, to hear more about your organic journey, Bala, and looking forward to your presentation, please. Thank you. Thank you, Karen and Sandeep and Nirabek uh, Masib for the platform. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Ravi, if you can share. Yeah. So I represent uh, Shrestha is the name of the organization. Uh, 24 Mantra is a brand name. I'm happy to see there are more than 130 participants. Um, so I, I think one of the more familiar brands in India uh, in the organic food space. <laughs> okay, next slide, please. Yeah. So I think one of the, uh, let's say, big thing for us is when uh, in 2004, Raj, who is the founder uh, and a friend, he kind of thought of organic, there was nothing called organic in India. But we were very clear from day one that our vision is to provide a sustainable livelihood for farmers, a sustainable lifestyle for consumers, and a sustainable earth. So these are the three pillars on which our organization is founded. And uh, we have more than uh, 500 employees, associates. Each one of them is committed to this. We uh, currently managed to grow from 2004 till now. We reach about 2 million consumers worldwide in about 50 countries. Uh, we retail, our brand is available, 24 Mantra, in about 180 cities and towns in India. We work in 15 states with more than 60,000 farmers. Most of them are below five acre land holdings, small and marginal farmers. And therefore we manage about 300,000 acres of land across India and uh, nearly about 95 plus crops, agriculture crops. 
So from day one, our philosophy was to provide the entire basket of uh, food to consumers so that uh, when somebody chooses to change their lifestyle to organic, they can have a whole range of products to choose from. Uh, our approach is uh, very, very, very strict uh, in terms of, uh, you know, we go to the farmer, identify the right areas. So we have a team of about 300 people only working with farmers in order to select, train, work with them day in and day out, get the certification done. We have multiple checks. Like I said, we export to 50 countries. So, I mean, obviously, over the last 15 years, we've had no issue at all because we take a lot of care in the farming practice to storage and processing. Uh, obviously, we get certified for uh, India, Euro Europe, so NPOP and OP, which some of you may be familiar with. We are certified for all uh, markets, all countries. It's a huge emphasis on quality assurance and R&D because ultimately the food business is about delivering the right quality consistently to uh, consumer's plate every day throughout the year. So I would say I think the topic was really about how to grow your organic business sustainably in this country. However, the next two slides, I'll talk about the five P's which I have believed and uh, worked with all my life. Uh, not just for organic, but I find this even more relevant for organic, where uh, the first and foremost is purpose. Uh, today, there are many people who uh, have kind of tried to brand and sell organic food without really, uh, you know, having a lot of clarity on the purpose. But I think very important for somebody to build a sustainable business is to have a clear purpose when you are getting into organic food business. Second is people, uh, and we are very, very particular about the kind of people who select and we work with, because they are the backbone, they do the work of ensuring organic integrity and taking the brand forward. Uh, passion, because again, I mean, this is a business of passion. This is not a business for us. This is a um, commitment, and therefore people need to be passionate about what they're doing. And perseverance, because uh, like some earlier, uh, Vishal also said, it takes a long, long time. It took us the first seven years just to cross a 10 crore business in India. I mean, it's just a huge struggle in the early days to set up. And then purity, right? I, I think that's uh, one thing where even before the laws became stricter, etc., we were very clear that we will, the brand, in an organic space, everybody who's in that space needs to ensure that what you're delivering is what you're promising, which is pure uh, certified organic food. Uh, next, please. And then the five C's, right? What we found, uh, in fact, was when the early days, people used to tell us 2005, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, all these years, why should I trust you? Why should I trust you as a brand? Because we were the only brand in India selling organic food. And the first step, therefore, is to create that trust. And this goes back to the P's of purity. And then talking to consumers and converting. Because it's a business worldwide where advertising doesn't work. You need to really work hard to convert every single consumer with your product offering, with your commitment, with your, uh, you know, uh, consistency. And that's what we believe uh, as a brand, uh, since again, the subject is about growing the business and the brand. The brand 24 mantra doesn't over promise. We don't say that you switch to organic you will become better, healthier, livelier, whatever. Because we talk about basic food, we talk about what's better, but we don't overpromise. So build a consistent image and quality. And they have clear communication. So in, in last 14 years, we have not deviated from our core communication of uh, being farm to fork and delivering good food to consumers. And the last but not the least is, it's a tough one because you're creating a new category. You are not actually just selling one more product, you're not creating one more business. It's about changing mindsets. And essentially in food and in India and many other parts of the world, changing food habits is one of the toughest uh, jobs on hand. So you are creating a category and therefore you need to be really, really uh, persistent and pers have a lot of perseverance to get this accomplished. 
uh, that's it from me. I think uh, I've done well on time. Yes, you have. Thank you. Thank you, dear Bala. Perfectly on time. And uh, thank you so much for that wonderful presentation. And we know now our market leader thing. So uh, we would like to play you a short video before we have a quick poll for you. So Ravi, can we have that video? And we have many questions while Ravi is playing the video in the question answer box. And you can, and in the chat as well. Uh, so I will be showing the digital edition of the Bio Park India. Many of you want to look for promoting your products uh, to meet the uh, the uh, leaders like who are here on the screen and they will be available there doing more sessions at our conference and throughout this uh, uh, event. So please uh, participate in the Digital India event uh, of BFARC India, which I will share very shortly after the video. Ravi, may we have the video, please? Thank you. It's a pleasure to see everybody coming together in terms of all stakeholders of the organic industry coming under one roof. organic webinar series which is a big part of the digital expo and we will have this continuing uh, till december so uh, quickly we'd like to get a quick feedback from you we would like to know what you think is the growth potential of the indian organic market and i'll have the poll for you in just a moment so quickly i will run this poll what is what do you feel the audience about the growth in the indian organic market is it five percent ten percent or fifteen the audience uh, is equally divided almost evenly between the 15 and 20 percent and you're right uh, the number is in the middle the last uh, in our first webinar when we shared the results it's about 17 to 18 percent and it's one of the fastest growing industries right now uh, especially in these post covid times it's uh, it's really uh, become a sunrise industry so now we go to our second part of our webinar where we welcome our speaker uh, rohan grover who's the director of nature biofood He's a serial entrepreneur and a seasoned professional in our agribusiness. Uh, Rohan believes in building the reputation and the market of India organics globally. He started his career about a decade and a half ago and really continues to work in the sustainable agriculture business space. After returning from the US in 2016, he is co manager of Future Biofoods, which is one of India's leading organic uh, exporters. And he's already established a base in US and Europe. Also, he's implementing some biodynamic farming with new products and integrating technology with farmers for, for innovation and our sustainable growth. So Rohan, over to you. The screen is yours. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone, uh, uh, friends and partners from India and uh, Europe. Thank you, Sandeep. Thank you, Karen and uh, Niramal Messi for having me here. It's such a pleasure to uh, be on this panel. I will be talking about uh, our journey as uh, Nature Biofoods, a little bit of background about Nature Biofoods and what has worked for us over these years uh, that we would like to share with you. So we are uh, a part of uh, LT Foods. LT Foods is a leading uh, rice-based company started by our chairman, Mr. V.K. Rora in 1963, uh, which has a very valuable and popular brand called Dawat uh, Basmati Rice, present in about 60 countries uh, across the world, uh, and also as a brand, Royal Basmati Rice, which is uh, a very prominent uh, brand in the US in the rice segment. Nature Bio Foods started its journey about 25 years ago in 1993. Again, uh, Mr. Vikarora pioneered it and uh, started off uh, this journey. Today, we have our operations in Europe and US where we believe to have a complete control on the supply chain where we work our, uh, as a base in India and take our products to US and Europe and deliver it to the doors of our partners. 
in terms of philosophy, uh, fortunately, we have now a legacy of about 25 years, which uh, where we have only seen the passion grow, uh, leading to a deep rooted connection with about 60,000 farmers and about 350 of the people that are associated uh, in the company in Nature Biofoods. We have a mission of uh, being a global leaders in delivering authentic organic ingredients to the world of consumers by practicing sustainable techniques of supply and production that secures a growing future to all the members. This mission is very well embedded in uh, all of us uh, at our company across the world. Uh, and uh, we've been following the same mission uh, throughout. Uh, the vision of the company is to lead the organic ingredient supply chain with a strong focus on sustainability and uh, finest uh, processing output. As we stand today, uh, uh, we, are, uh, uh, we work all the gray shaded areas in the states that you see on the map of India here is where we have some of the other projects. We have about 115 uh, projects uh, uh, where we work with about 60,000 farmers over a land of about 80,000 hectares. And on an annual level, we process close to about 100,000 metric tons of uh, grains uh, in across our five uh, facilities in India. So uh, while the, the journey has been for 25 years, we believe that essentially there are about five basic principles and mantras and not 24, but five where we believe that uh, are uh, that have worked very well for us and I believe it should work for everyone in the industry and uh, for, for me to start uh, the first one very close uh, to my heart is, is working very closely with the farmers a strong focus on agriculture and farming uh, we have been consistently giving right inputs and uh, technology and working with the farmers that have worked really well for us and it's a very important base to start having a very close connection with the farmers second very important is while you are a part of this movement you also have to make an impact on the planet and the people and everybody in the supply chain. So very strong focus on the sustainability would be a very important part of uh, uh, having and starting this journey. Third is, uh, is, is the compliance. You are you're doing a lot of stuff on, on the ground, in the field, you're, you're doing a lot for the environment, but if you're not compliant, it will not be recognized. So having a very strong need of understanding compliance is very important for this business. Understanding the market and the opportunities. It's uh, so what is happening in the world, how the trends are changing is very important to know. And that's what we understood uh, as we go along and very effective supply chain. So these are the five key things that I believe have worked for us very well. So facilitating the organic supply chain, we work very closely with the farmers. We give them fair prices to the farmers. We give them advisory services. We give them improved input supplies, organic premiums and buyback supports. Working very well on the, uh, all the aspects of the supply chain, right from plowing to sowing to crop management to harvest, farm produce, factories, stacking and processing. And these are the product ranges. And the, all these product ranges have actually evolved over the years. We have always hailed from a rice company. So rice has been the essential part of our uh, business. So from since 1993, we've been doing organic rices. In 2012, we introduced organic pulses. In 2016, we introduced organic seeds, which includes flex seeds, sesame seeds, amaranth seeds, uh, millets in 2018, and in 2016, cashews. So that has been uh, uh, our journey in, in diversification of the products that we have introduced. Having a presence in the, in the international world has really helped us in, in building uh, Indian organics and make it, have it reach to various parts of the world. So while our base, very strong base is in India, our presence in Europe and US has also helped us in taking the distribution forward and uh, taking the supply chain and controlling the supply chain from, from farm to fork. Well, the next part of it is uh, a small statistics we all are aware as a part of the industry, uh, but still I believe this has really helped us while we were having and making our strategies and how to grow this business on what has really been the industry. How to, what do you know about the market and what is, how the market is and, and where do you see the opportunities? So, uh, and this is again, uh, Dr. Yadav in the first webinar, I was seeing that he has mentioned some part of it, but uh, it's all about 4.2 million hectares of the organic uh, uh, hectares area that India has with large portions and large uh, organic states, I would say, uh, Madhya Pradesh, Rajasthan, Maharashtra and Uttar Pradesh. 
uh, and uh, the key products that are there are oil seeds, sugar cane, cereals, millets, cotton pulses, medicinal plants, tea, fruits, spices, dry fruits, vegetables, coffee, and functional foods. So how we have seen the category has grown in the last three years. This is a very important, uh, uh, I would say, a playground for all of us to understand how, uh, where the opportunities lies today. Uh, in 2017 and 18, as we have seen the market of Indian export of food or the grains and cereals, and that's the category we are in. So we were always focused around these categories. There are about 438 million US dollars worth of exports that were happening. So starting from rice, about, which was about 10% of the overall exports, to other oil seeds, to flour, to soya bean, to, to soy, soy meal, sugar, tea, coffee, lentils, nuts, Ayurveda products, fruits and vegetables, spices and others. If you look at how the category has, how the exports from India has increased, it has increased from $438 million to $653 million. And if you look at the year, the last year, I don't know if you're able to see the screen, but this has reached to about $757 million with a change of all the categories place. So understanding these trends have really worked well for us. And uh, organic is no more just a product which is free from pesticides and chemicals, I believe. It's, it's a lifestyle. It changes every week, month, and daily, and, and the trends, and you need to be abreast with everything what's happening. Some of the key uh, products, how they behaved in the last three years, if you see uh, some of the categories where we have always uh, followed them. This is rice, other oil seeds, soybean. Uh, if you see the soybean that has drastically uh, come down in the industry as an export, but if you see soy meal, it has drastically increased over the three years. So understanding these opportunities and, and be there at the right time has really helped us and should help everyone in the industry. So uh, these are certain facts that we can always use to understand which pro uh, products and uh, categories to choose in. In terms of geographies, uh, a very important part of how we see that uh, the, the factors and the mantras that have worked for us is understanding the market and where the market is. So uh, in the 757 million US dollars worth of the business that are exported out last year, North America is about 57%, Europe is about 34%. And uh, the key products in North America is soya meal, soya bean, other spices becoming very, very big uh, there. And in Europe, it's about tea, coffee, soya meal, seeds, and uh, sugar. If you look at uh, how we classify this as a market as a food market and a feed market. So the grains and food and the food products that go into the feed side of the business, they are into feed, uh, the, where we have multiple grains which are going to the consumers and adults, and we classify them as food. So what we have seen is in the overall export that has happened last year, food is about 61%, feed is about 39%. And if you look at, again, I don't know if you are, if you're able to see the food uh, feed side, uh, Europe is about 14%, the rest of the world is about uh, 3% and, and uh, North America is about 83% of the overall feed that food for feed or grains for feed that is uh, going into that sector. In terms of food, if you see, uh, Europe is about 214 million, uh, North America is about 100 and, uh, 190 uh, million dollars. So essentially the same base US and Europe. So uh, understanding the regions and geographies have really worked well for us, where to focus, what categories uh, to choose in. Uh, as I said, we were having a big farming base for our rice. Uh, we, we had, we, it was very uh, important for us to focus on the other crops, which our farmers were growing as their alternative crop, as their rotational crops. And using that supply chain and building this up has really helped us in, uh, in making it uh, where we are today. So that's about my presentation. I hope I'm on time. <laughs> yeah, thanks a lot, uh, Rohan. Very exciting. And uh, also the statistics, thank you for that. <laughs> Very elaborated. So now uh, it's my pleasure to, and for us all, I guess, uh, to listen to the story of Sanjeev Bhatt, the director of uh, Radiko. Hello, Sanjeev. He's uh, 
MBA alumni from IMT Giziabat, and he's, uh, his professional expertise is the natural and organic hair colors. So this is only organic herbs and nothing else. Uh, so Radico is the first in the world to get organic certification in hair colors by EcoCert France. And he started his own business in 1992 with almost zero money. And at that time, he was just a simple man the next door, he told us. So we are now excited to listen how that uh, goes and how you became that what you today. The screen is yours, please. Yeah. Thank you very much, uh, Karen, and uh, hello to all the panelists and uh, all the participants, and uh, I welcome you all. Uh, well, uh, I'm Sanjeev Bhar, founder of Radico Organic Hair Colors, and I started my journey in 1992 uh, I think it was much before before the time, and my only objective was when we say natural or when we say organic or when we say herbal, it has to be made hundred percent made with herbs only. That was my fight in the global world, and uh, I had to fight and work very hard to prove this point, but no one was listening to me at that time. You know, everyone kicked me out and said, no, no, we are not interested in 100% natural. We are not interested in 100%, we are interested in efficacy and all those kinds of things. Well, starting from such kind of rejections and uh, such kind of failures initially, but I was quite determined to make it. And I'm proud to say today, after facing two bankruptcies, a lot of hardships, I am owner of a Indian-based multinational company. And my brand is available in 100 plus countries. To be very honest, I stopped counting after 100. So we may be in 100 or maybe 110 or 108 countries. How did it happen? How could a boy next door could make it? And that too in globally, in 100 countries, more than 100 countries. And with the utmost satisfaction of the buyer. Today, we are the only company in the world which is focused and dedicated 100% on this natural and 100% organic hair color. We focus. Now, giving this example and with my experience, I have identified certain steps to success. And believe me, if you follow these steps, anyone, I repeat, anyone can become successful. Anyone can become rich and famous. You have to just believe it. So what are those steps? First step is, dreaming, dare to dream, and dare to dream big. Second is believe in your dream. Have a passion, a fire in your belly. You should be passionate about your dream. Make your passion a profession, then you can give the best. Then identify unique product. Now you will say that unique product needs innovation. And everyone cannot be an Einstein and we cannot spend whole life on innovation. You are right. Innovation is difficult. Use renovation. Take the existing products, present in a different way. That's how I did in 1992. These henna herbs were already present. I simply took it and presented it as a hair color, 100% natural in 1992. At that time, organic was not so popular. World organic, 
I came to know about World Organic later on in Germany and in Japan. When I made 100% natural, just made of herbs, and there was some limitation on efficacy, but it was very safe for health, for environment. Second point is when you choose a product, it should be unique. Well, you can use innovation or a renovation, then it should be safe for body and health and also for environment. Thirdly, you should be honest and ethical. Even if there is a limitation on your product, tell it to the world. Like there was a big fight when we were labeling our product. My marketing team said, sir, we should say all the good, good things. I said, no, mention it on the label that this is 100% natural color. It may even not give color. Everyone laughed. I said, no. And I was very adamant. And when I introduced with these kind of things in international business, international market, first in Japan, followed by Germany, and everyone highly appreciated. And my marketing team and all those who were laughing on me, it became a new trend. And everyone said, company is honest. They're telling clearly the limitation of the product. But I said, it is safe for your body, no side effects, no allergy, and very good for environment too. You know? And that was highly appreciated. Third thing is focus, you know. I focused and I gave my whole life only on 100% natural or 100% herbal color, which is pure, honest product. There is no additive, no synthetics, no hidden ingredients, no direct or indirectly. I prove that this is organic or natural or something like that. Pure, honest. And it was sooner or later highly appreciated. I used to say there are certain limitations. It cannot give efficacy as 100% chemical colors. Its retention is also less, but it is safe and healthy. And people slowly started accepting that. My first business, I started with Japan. Fortunately or unfortunately. Why I say unfortunately? Because Japan was very tough nut to crack. I kept on sending 17 samples over the period of two years and in a row they kept on rejecting it. Make it more efficient, make it more perfect because Japan expectation of quality was highest in birth. I almost cried but never gave up. And I was determined to improve it, send it. And thanks to Japanese too, they were determined and they never refused. And they kept on checking, checking. 18th sample was accepted. And then after that, no look back. Today, they are still our bias and we are doing business in millions. You know? And my first order was just for 240 US dollars. That was my first order for first natural hair colors. Another important point, well, you have a unique product. It is safe and sound for health and uh, environment. You are ethical and honest, but how do the society and the people believe? How do they believe? You may be honest, you may not be honest. There may be some hidden ingredients which are not natural or organic? Well, there comes the certification. You should get your product certified with the top-notch certifying companies of the world, which are trustworthy. I came to know about organic in Germany. I like to just uh, point out that I started my business from international market because I used to think that my honesty is not appreciated in my country in India. 
And initially, when I started my business with the PF amount, and when I started in India, no one paid me. That was my first bankruptcy, very fast and a very good business revenue and very good understanding. So then I decided I will start my business international. And then, fortunately or unfortunately, I got in touch with Japan. And Japanese, they taught me quality and perfection. Initially, they took time, but I learned the quality. So another important aspect is you have a very innovative product. You have a unique product, which is safe, which is highest in quality. And you should have a certification. And then it should be very well presentable. We took two years to design our package. I hired a very eminent, not very eminent, but young and budding designer in UK, who, who she used to expert in designing of natural products. And when she presented me this package, which you are looking at the screen, I laughed. What the hell you have made? It's a hair color and there is no model and no hair. And I shouted at her. She said, relax, Sajeev, just listen to me. You are into organic product, which is all natural, all herbs. And if I give a model, all the chemical hair colors have hair and model. If your product is there in the shelf, no one will look into it. It will not catch the attention. They will think another chemical hair color. So I did not give the model. I made it green so that if anyone walking in the store, they see something green with leaves, they say, oh, something natural or maybe organic. Then they get attracted and they walk towards the shelf and they see the first word, which is, which is most bold or in the biggest letter is organic. And it catches their attention. Second large word is hair color. And then they say, oh, it's hair color. I said, wonderful. And I accepted immediately. And today it is highly appreciated in 100 plus countries. So what is the lesson? Please give your best, focus. And whatever best you can give on one product, give full attention. Now we move on uh, to last but not the least, uh, my dear friend, the Dr. Thomas Jacob, who is the advisor to PGS Organic Spices, the largest organic uh, exporter from India. Uh, he uh, has started uh, his career in academics. He was the head of department for the medicinal herb uh, division in Kerala in a leading university in Kerala. And then after a decade and a half, he was with the spice board uh, as a director. And there, you know, one of the things we are very grateful to him for was to introduce biodynamics. You know, he did one of the first trainings of biodynamics with the spice board with many small farmers. He was always passionate about working with small farmers, very passionate about innovation. And he brings all this into PDF. So I, I work with him on many projects together and I'm always inspired by him. And one, one more thing is he's very passionate also about Riksha Ayurveda. You know? He's one of the few people in India I you know who's really made a study of it and doing a lot of experiments and promoting this ancient Indian agriculture also in, in Kerala and parts of India. So Dr. Thomas, over to you. Thank you, uh, Santi, uh, Karen, my uh, Ravi and the guest of, uh, you know, rest of the Biofac uh, India group. In fact, uh, PDS feel it very, very honored to share the platform with, uh, you know, the leaders in organic, uh, uh, you know, organic uh, from India. I am so, we feel it very fortunate. Uh, in fact, uh, just to uh, introduce ourselves, we are an NGO. Uh, non-government organization uh, called as Pyramid Development Society and under the Pyramid Development Society, uh, PD's Organic Spices is one of the largest and uh, just want to correct um, uh, Sandeep, we are one of the largest in the spice sector, not the largest with the whole panelist uh, sitting uh, around, but we are so proud to be a part of uh, uh, the export for or promotion of organic from India. In fact, we are, this is where we are. 
so we started at 1980 as an NGO, and our challenges has been that that time is where the green revolution was going on in India, and our founder is a priest and present, or rather just resident uh, uh, bishop, uh, Matthew Arakal. He visualized that this sort of agriculture is not going to sustain in a very sensitive Western Ghats, which is supposed, to, which is one of the uh, biodiversity hotspot in the world. So if you are going to practice sort of a green revolution sort of thing, he's not going to be sustained. So that is the basis in which we started on. And our vision has been that they may have life and have it abundantly, which means that life is not only human life. The entire life around us is called as life, whether it is plants, animals, the microbes, uh, the whole system, we call it as life. And fortunately, that is what we are now gaining the uh, advantage of. Then uh, we started uh, organizing the small farmers uh, right from there. And then we found that there is no more organic, I mean, there is no market for any sustainable during the 80s, mid 80s and mid 90s. Uh, so we started, went into the first organic certification program in spices. And uh, from uh, 1998 onwards, we started spices to all around the world. And uh, we have a network of very small group of around 3,000 farmers working, and we are adding on more and more farmers are getting uh, interested in one. And uh, we are always, as I said, top in the export of spices. Can I have the next slide, please? Yeah, this is our reach everywhere. Uh, the small, uh, you know, organization sitting in the heart of, uh, or rather in the Western Guards, uh, have been having a whole re reach. The advantage we are having and the pride we are having. Actually, it is the small farmers, you know, who produces around 50 to 100 kilos of material or spices are being uh, thrown all around the world. And, uh, you know, that is one of the satisfaction my farmers have. Uh, and that is our satisfaction that we are able to support the farmers in reaching to the global market. Can you have the next slide, please? Yeah, and this, uh, this you have to look at it. We only deal with spices and that you from our uh, uh, center of origin that is wherever the, the 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 spices are from this local area we don't we are not looking at any diversification of spices into your basket because that is goes around 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 uh, you know beyond our uh, origin of uh, you know center of origin so we are very particular that we produce and uh, you know and sell and export materials that is from originated from that area originated and suited to that particular ecosystem and uh, and also to the soil and the environment. Uh, so everything we take into as a holistic view uh, and not on the crop wise. So this is the basket of, uh, you know, crops we have in Western Ghats and that's what we are uh, exporting. Next slide, please. And uh, you have, a, you know, this is the certifications we have. And as you said, on a left green one with all the national certifications from the, all the uh, countries which we want I mean, uh, mandatory. Then we have all the, uh, you know, private labeling. We have, as uh, you know, <clears throat> Sandeep was saying, uh, we are the first to uh, do, started doing Demeter certifications and uh, biosis and all the private labels we have. So all these certifications are customer driven, not that we make the certification and ask for search for a market. If at all a customer requirement, as per that, we just go on the certification. And this is the spread of the certification. And you know, the managing a, a group of farmers, small farmers, is the average is one hectare. Don't have any, any small farmer above one hectare. So such a service organization in the world class with the entire processing is consolidated and processed as the PDS organic spices. We are in the world class, uh, you know, uh, certification for the processing as well. Next slide, please. And as everybody was saying, I think the works out to be the same. As far as we are concerned, the sustainability is based on three pillars we always develop. And one is having the trust of all the players in the supply chain. And unless and until you have, uh, you build up this trust, you, you know, this going to, is not going to sustain. So we have the trust from the farmers because they know that they are the best benefit you are, they are being provided for the services. And we have the customers who are satisfied and they understand what, what the entire supply chain is about. Transparency throughout the value chain. Everybody knows what is the chunk of material that is being uh, you know, uh, taken off from the, uh, from right from the customer market to the farmer. How much is the 
margin everybody has. So that is uh, transparency in every dealing in the value chain. And we have a fantastic uh, established traceability system, which is most essential we established in right from 1998 which is, uh, you know, that is the success of it. So anybody can come and trace, and anybody who gets uh, uh, material in a foreign country could even trace out uh, who the uh, set of the farmers who, uh, whom, from whom it is being traced. So the traceability is also assured. And another, uh, uh, you know, our USP again is we get the most fresh material because the factory is situated in the midst of the farming community. So the maximum time the delay is one hour to take the a material into the fresh. So we, we cannot, nobody can compete, uh, you know, PDS for the freshness of the material that is being brought in into the processing and then processed and uh, exported. And all the products are from the biodiversity enriched uh, ecosystem. So right from the beginning, fortunately, we never thought in a value as such, but we had all the uh, thought of uh, the ecosystem. But now, because of the, you know, uh, SDS and all those, uh, UN uh, uh, standards that is coming in, we find that we are already combining to all that because we don't have to do any any modification to uh, tune to any of this. Yeah, and then this is, unless we find that this, uh, you know, farmer is the core, unless and then we project the farmer as the core of the activity, we take all the cost of the certification, we gave them the all the premiums and the fair trade purchase from the farm gate. Again, that is the greatest one because no, we, we cautiously do it because we don't want any additional pollution for all the people coming and giving it to the, into, the, uh, into our office. So we take it from the farm gate and we have all the policies for a very transparent payment system. And we have a support system for training, training and uh, development. We have, a, we have a certified organic seed and uh, bio input supply system within the organization. And we also have based on soil health and advisory system, we have a very beautiful advisory system. Next one. And again, when you say uh, sustainability is not only production, if we come into the, our factory premises, the entire rainwater, of course, Kerala gets a beautiful, uh, you know, 250 centimeter or, uh, you know, 2,500 millimeter of rainfall. It's all being stored and it is utilized for our entire processing. So we actually, it is a water neutral processing center. We don't, uh, you know, our, when you look at the budget of watering, we are zero, by, you know, we don't have any balance or we have only excess of uh, water stored. And we use the natural energy for most of the time. Uh, it is not 100%, but our solar drying, so you use your solar energy and probably in the, in the coming future, the entire processing will be from the solar energy processing unit. That's what we are aiming at for another two, three years time. Next slide, please. Next slide, please. Yeah, I mean, this is what our, uh, from the farm uh, to the export and retail, you find the entire supply chain quality and every material is steam sterilized. So uh, all uh, values have been added into the, uh, into the food safety aspect have been taken into the aspect, uh, you know, into our supply chain. Next, please. Next, please. Yeah, and uh, you are a 98% of us was exported, but then so much of uh, growth of organic within the country, and there is a lot of pressure for us to supply. So we have also gone into the retailing for last three years, and it has been really going exponentially with all these uh, you know, supermarkets taking our uh, brand uh, all around. So that is uh, a good indication where how um, organic is growing within the country because I, we were only looking at the export market. Now it has come into the country and there is a great opportunity. Next slide, please. Yeah, our learnings. All our activities, since it's an agriculture com uh, commodity, it has to be farmer centric. And the farmer has to be because they are the lowest and most suffering lot of people. I mean, our biggest challenge is to keep the people in farming. So unless and until we address the farmer's needs, that cannot be happen. And then why most of these times I felt that schemes are government schemes or other schemes are being, uh, you know, was a failure. Basically because they need an a institution to handhold farmer from uh, farming to the marketing. So unless and until that is being done by an institution, they, you, you have a break in some of those uh, supply chain, it collapses. And uh, another uh, great learning is that you always align with the global changes. So you need to predict what is happening 
five years uh, you know ahead in what is happening in the global and if you can uh, tune accordingly you will be in the right time to be you know into the global as well as in the domestic market as a trust and transparency as always everybody said and adapting to climate change and recognizing ecosystem services because we do a quite a lot of ecosystem quantification you know that even our small farmer we no I, i we have recorded how much is the carbon stored uh, by each farm through the, the trees so we have a very good uh, climate change in uh, you know ecosystem service system already in place and that is also a very good uh, selling point and we also work with a lot of uh, uh, customers like women and what our policy here is ecology uh, what uh, ecological action we do to bring in economic uh benefit to the farmers especially the women community so what we did is that this is vetiver grass most of you know that vetiver grass we use it for uh, you know as a soil binder to re reduce erosion but when we we take the grass the women group we are trained the women group they make baskets and this is our uh, you know entrepreneurship with the women they make the basket we sell it out with uh, as, as a gift bo box so there is an economy coming into the ecological action we take thank you so much for the time i think uh, uh, hope it is clear thank you yeah thank you thank you so much uh, uh, dr jacob we have many many questions here and uh, we don't know if we'll be able to do all those in time so we will put the email id uh, the audience where you can post your questions but we'll just karen and i will now try to uh, kind of summarize the general trend of the questions and we will ask our panel and then also dear panelists we'll also like a uh, few takeaways uh, about this webinar about this topic uh, what you feel uh, so shall we start uh, we'll start backwards now with you when we'll start with you dr thomas jacob now what you said about to bio in india uh, what what are the key one or two things what people should know about building a brand in india and and what is your takeaway now for new people who are coming in uh, into this industry how how should we do it uh, better sustainably I, my uh, you know biggest take takeaway is that uh, uh, it has to be transparent traceable and there is a trust between everyone in the chat this is what what i felt this to be the basic so it is a it is it is a long term process it cannot be built it in a one day as uh, many of the speakers said we have to pursue on this based on this principle that is one side and if you are working with a farmer focus on the farmer and we actually uh, uh, the institution we take farmer technology we never uh, we have a program called, called as a uh, land to lab we never bring technology from top and try to put it on the farm in the farm level we take the reverse side we take the you know uh, uh, learning from the farmer try to integrate the modern technology so that farmers is co comfortable in adopting it these are the two takeaways i think i would i would have in this uh, session and definitely the organic is growing and uh, uh, again organic is not just pesticide free you need to know that it has to have the biodiversity you have to have the spices had the benefit of uh, having an immune especially after covid the demand of spices have grown so much because of the immunity and health benefit so i think the health benefit wellness need to be uh, promoted in the organic much more thank you thank you thank you dr thomas Karen, over to you. Yeah, thank you very much. So, uh, Zanjeev, uh, you already told us a lot about your passion and how to uh, install a brand successfully. Uh, can you tell us a bit more about the traceability of your value chain? So, where do you source? Um, do you work directly with farmers? And uh, is that one of your also uh, concerning to your business uh, strategy? the traceability is very very important and we have a complete traceability right from field to factory and initially we started organic is here to stay it is not a fad fashion oriented drive no all naturals will convert into organic and it's a very huge market going to come 100 plus farmers have been united with us and uh, since we are very ethical and uh, we try to give them the best possible prices highest possible prices it's a win win strategy so everyone want to join us thank you thank you so much uh, for that uh, input and uh, 
Now, Rohan, over to you. You know, uh, this you, you shared very well in your presentation about these international markets, and now you know with this COVID impact on the supply chains, how has it impacted you now? People who are growing their businesses now in this post-COVID era, uh, what are your? How did you guys cope? Any suggestions? And then again, after that, just takeaways on this webinar on the whole topic about building brands. Uh, Sandeep, like I uh, say this to all my colleagues and, and friends, the only good thing that has happened in this whole pandemic is that uh, everybody has uh, become more aware of what they're eating and where the food is coming from. That has really helped us. Uh, we were uh, actually expected to produce uh, a lot more than what we usually do. And there were a lot of requirements from across the world uh, for the products that we deal in. Uh, we were able to capitalize that, uh, thankfully, uh, because of the network and the supply chain that we have. I think all of us come together and during that time. I still remember March and April. Uh, we were having at least uh, close to about many rooms inside our facilities just to have people stay so that we don't get any cross contamination or infections from uh, outside. And we were able to produce and ship a lot. I think this uh, this is here to stay. We are already seeing a lot of growth. Uh, that is happening in the international world uh, in terms of the consumption of the organic food. I see in our categories and also in the Indian organic produce close to about 15 to 20 percent a sustainable growth, uh, which is an add-on uh, because of this pandemic and uh, the changes that have happened. I also would like to say that some of the categories where we already are uh, dealing in as as India organics and not as nature by food alone, but uh, all the opportunities that are available in India, there are many more opportunities that are still there. Some of these opportunities are not necessarily the crops which are getting exported today or which are getting consumed today. There are crops which are grown in Africa, they're also grown here. There are crops which are grown in China, they're also grown here. We have to understand and take them uh, to the world. The products such as millets, uh, it's such a hidden treasure. Uh, in India and uh, we really have to come along as an industry and take these products and offer to our international partners and industries and, and, and have them here to see what real treasure it is. So I believe the opportunity is, is, has really picked up and uh, it is here to stay for a very good reason. Yeah, thank you Rohan for this um, insight. So we are going uh, to Bala. So for a key takeaway from or learnings from these uh, views from others and also from your strategy, what kind of advice, key advice can you give to others who are in the uh, organic industry in India and um, trying to yeah, approach a better basic? Okay, uh, so I think one, uh, you know, from the current, let's say, panelists, the passion and the purpose is very clear, and that's a that's sort of a big, big sort of takeaway and an important factor for building a business like this, which is a bit of a you know slow burn as well as something where you need to believe in. If you don't believe as a consumer, as a businessman, this business will not grow. So that's something which is very clear from the panelists. So that's a big takeaway. Everybody's story is uh, similar in terms of why they started, how they started, and that's very important. And that's what I said in my presentation that if you don't have a purpose, this is uh, unfortunately in our country, we have this whole crap story of, you know, something starts and everybody jumps in and uh, thinks it's a big bug. Uh, so that's, that's a message from my side is, I, I mean, I've seen this before in other businesses. Uh, this is not a quick fix business. This is not a business where you just get into trading because there is a delta and that's what many people do. They look at, uh, you know, the difference in prices and therefore there's a lot of money to make and get into it. But this category, in especially in India, and I'm only talking about India because internationally it's well-established category, uh, it's at a very nascent stage. Uh, we need to nurture it very carefully. We need to do the right things day in and day out. Um, and not really, there is no short term or no quick fix in this business, in this category. So that's the most crucial part. That's what I lose my sleep over. And, uh, you know, it's very tough to gain consumers' trust in this category. And uh, while some people are doing it, 
some people may kind of spoil it and that will harm the category. So while the pandemic has helped all of that, I think it's also a caution that, you know, people jump into it for the wrong reason. It could derail the whole thing. So that's my key takeaway or key advice to everybody on the show. Thanks. Thank, thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much, Bala. That's very, very uh, thought provoking and appropriate. So my next question over to you, Likita, you know, you say you mentioned in a presentation that you pivoted from being only in national, I mean, you still continue in Hyderabad and the local markets, but also started an export thing and that many of our audience wants to know, how is that leap, you know, how, how difficult was it or, uh, you know, how, what changed, what did you have to change to focus from this local market, national market to the international market? Um, so we have always been domestically inclined because we wanted to create a brand in the market and uh, we've always uh, wanted like a main revenue stream has come from and still comes from uh, uh, Terra Greens as the brand. But I think, uh, you know, like everybody else on the panel has uh, pointed out, uh, considering uh, the fragmented supply chain of the organic sphere and how we need to constantly work on building um, a supply chain wherein we are working with the farmers, the processing units and our packaging units, we have to start creating markets for everybody. And the pace at which the domestic market is growing and also the value which the domestic market gives to our produce, sometimes the balance is not right. And that's the reason we did get into the uh, bulk private labeling and the wholesale market, just to make sure that we persevere through the time. And um, so export for me particularly was a very, very new segment. Um, I, I had to build uh, the sales team and also like even working with other businesses because our focus uh, was always on retail. Um, we never wanted to be a bulk or a private labeling player. Um, so uh, the shift happened gradually. I think we are still trying to uh, get our foothold, but I've uh, um, always, uh, it's always helped to be transparent. It's always helped to have control over the supply chain and also be um, honest with capacities and capabilities. So um, that's helped us. Um, we are still very, very new into the export market. I still have a lot of things to learn. And uh, very rightly pointed out um, is people, you know, it's I think to get the key people on board, um, to trust, to delegate is also something that I've probably learned in my entrepreneurial journey. And uh, hopefully the export vertical uh, comes up and um, contributes to the business. Thank you. Thank you, Likita, so much. Yeah, um, that, yeah. Over uh, to you, Karen. Uh, I wanted to finish with Likita, but yeah. <laughs> I started with Likita, but okay. So now I'm... Uh, last but not least uh, over to you Vishal dear friend uh, what was uh, or is your driving motivation to always stick deeper and try to innovate uh, things and uh, yeah what advice can you give and what is the key takeaway for you from uh, this uh, session please thank you Karen I think uh, what I feel is that while, of course, we are, uh, you know, doing what you're doing and sometimes you think that uh, whatever uh, business or whatever action that you're taking has a limited sphere. But what I realize over a period of years is that if you're really uh, committed to what you're doing, if you're really taking up the challenges and not taking the easy way out, not only you build something for yourself, but you also end up, you know, giving... Uh, well, inspiration is a large, bigger word, but setting an example or also opening a way where many others can also, uh, you know, believe that, yes, it's possible to, you know, to do this. That's yes, it's, you know, you can stay honest, you can stay true and at the same time build a successful business. I think that's, that, that takes uh, really one, it takes innovation. And I think that's what I believe that uh, I've really always tried that, Innovation can be in product, it can be in process, it can be even in the market. But at the end of the day, you really take on the challenges and then you try, you do not look, say that organic is difficult or you don't say that organic product cannot be great or you know it will have its compromises. You take on the challenge and you work on them and in the process you end up, you know, like I feel that 
you know, I was, I think a lot of companies are now adapting natural and organic beauty product standards. Uh, I think that's, you know, there are many ways, there are still many, I think, areas to really uh, go and explore. And that's what keeps me going. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much. Thanks to all our uh, panelists. It was a great session. I enjoyed it very much to hear all your stories, all your organic journeys. Um, I hope to see you again at uh, Biofach India Digital somehow in a panel or in a webinar or in the conference, wherever. And uh, now it's time to uh, invite all our uh, attendees to our next webinar that will be in two weeks from now. Always same date, same uh, time. And there we then will speak about uh, why you must uh, participate and which advantages and opportunities will await uh, you attending Biofach India Digital. So that First will be a three-day event, but later on we will continue uh, with uh, a lot of exciting uh, opportunities for you as an exhibitor, also as um, attendee and visitor of this digital fair. Over to you, Kamat. I say thank you, goodbye to all of you, and uh, yeah, please, Sandy. Yeah, thank you. Thank you all. Thank you for attending. So dear audience, uh, yeah, panelists, if you have other meetings, just say some messages. Uh, we will see you. I'll be in touch with you all later. Um, uh, we have a very exciting program in the digital edition. We have conferences where the, the industry leaders, some of them are here and others will be there interacting with the top government officials on how we can really take our organic moment forward. Uh, we will have specific people from APIDA who will be answering many of your questions or concerns that you may have. Uh, we also have on the third day, the science day, you know, so that uh, we can talk about technologies, uh, you know, what Vishal touched upon, how organic, I believe, can be better than even conventional in terms of productivity and, and definitely in terms of nutrient density and quality of produce. So, so we will have a scientific session as well. Parallelly, there will be many international as well as national bio meets uh, where we will set up the bio meet. And these webinars will continue. This engagement is throughout the year. So we expect many people to visit and uh, uh, from the next session also we'll have videos for you on on walkthroughs on how the exhibition looks and and things like that so thanks thanks to all the attendees uh, thank you so much and uh, let's e-meet before we re-meet and uh, watch this space for two weeks from now for our next webinar thank you thank you all thank you bye 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 bye, bye, -bye. bye, -bye. bye, -bye.